guys, if you're new here, I'm Sandy. Hello, and I do crafts. Welcome. Um, if you're joining me again, thank you so much. I know there's a ton of stuff you could be doing right now, and instead you're choosing to hang out with me and Maisie, which brings me to the main housekeeping. I have a puppy. Her name is Maisie, so if you hear puppy sounds, um, she was sleeping before when I decided to do this. Uh, that's her. And I also have a budgie. His name is Cooper Petey and he sings. So if you hear a bird inside, it's because there's a bird inside. Yes, sweetheart. Can you sit? Okay, so, um, I'm going to get her a toy. Okay, the puppy has been walked and she is now being scatterfed. Um, and if you think, wow, it looks like it's really hot there and this girl is dying. As she looks like she could really use a nice big glass of rosé. Cheers, internet friend. I agree. So, um, one last bit of housekeeping. You may hear my fan in the background. Um, that's because it is incredibly hot and humid in here. And, um, yeah, it's, it's not a good time. Um, I'm dying. I don't know how Maisie's doing it in a little fur coat. So, yeah. Um, but, crafts. So today I have a little bit of knitting, um, a lot of knitting and a little bit of sewing. So um, for the sake of continuity, I know that in the last few months, years, I have been wanting to do Lonnie's 52 weeks of sock. Lonnie, Lon, on a go lan, like it's um, French. Um, how do you pronounce it? 52 weeks of socks. Um, I am officially shelving this quite literally, because it's a book. Um, I'm just solving this book. I have um, tried two of them. I was doing the Avene socks. I honestly don't think, like I know I have long feet, but I actually have like very normal sized feet. Um, I've never really had an issue with shoes. My mom has wide feet, so I know that there's like a lot of variations. But um, for some odd reason, even just doing the measurements, I cannot get socks that fit me out of this book. So I think, like, I thought I was a rather advanced sock knitter, but maybe um, I need to do, like, I'm not having trouble with the different types of heel turns or the toe up or the, you know, cuff down, but I don't know, for some odd reason, this, I'm just not having fun with it. I'm really not enjoying it. Um, I was doing these and I, and I would just put them down and I would have no desire to pick it up. So I've just decided this is not the book for me right now. Um, I'd love to come back to it one day, but right now, especially, maybe when all my friends stop having babies and, like, my sock knitting can be the more advanced project, um, uh, but right now, just not my thing. So that's all I'm going to talk about that until I, I don't know, have delusions of grandeur and pick it up again. Um, but I do always like to have a sock on the needles because socks are amazing, <laughs> and so I, um picked up these. So this is um, Studio, or no, Curiosity Handmade. They're the Studio La Socks. Um, they're in yarn, hand dyed by me. I believe, I want to say this was with rhubarb. I really didn't keep good enough track of which kits did which. So this yarn I dyed, it's an Apple Oak Fiber Works kit um, for natural dyeing. And I'm using their base, which is a wool, I believe 60 wool, 20 linen, 20 reamy. I absolutely love this yarn. Um, it's super breathable, super light, but the wool makes it super warm. Like, yeah, it can be a little tight, but it does sort of stretch out once you wear the sock a little bit. Um, yeah, I absolutely love this. I'm doing the medium size because I like um, on just my standard, I want to say 2.25 millimeter sock needles. I don't even know what these are anymore. Um, to me, they're just my sock needles. Um, but on those, I like a 64 stitch count. So I did have some confusion at the top of this because I read, um, I read SL2, S S12, and I was like, how do you slip 12 stitches and still have like a functional sock? It was a whole thing. I woke up the next day, looked at it, and I was like, oh, right. So, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying these. Uh, these are the last year's 
having a talk society. So she usually does it right about now, um, where you get a pattern every month and you can buy like the release of all the patterns and get them cheaper, which I was really excited to do. I was actually going to keep up with it this summer. That was kind of my plan and do the sock a month, but alas, she did not, um, do it. So Maisie, what are you doing? Why am I so worried? She likes to eat my knitting and all my knitting's here. Um, but yeah, so she didn't do it this year, so I figured, okay, I'll pick up last year's. And I'm just, these patterns are so good. Like, she makes them to be relaxing. They literally um, go, like, line by line. So it's just such a relaxing way to knit. Um, and they're easily memorizable, so you just go for it. So if you're looking for, like, a good sock project just to kind of decompress and exist, especially now it's just a sock net sock which I'm loving, but it's still special because it's my favorite of the colors. I feel like I just look really good in a mustard and I know it's a sock and I do fun colors in socks because like nobody sees them, but at the same time, like I love it. I just love these. Um, I love how these turned out. The yarn's beautiful. Like no notes, 10 out of 10. So that's, yeah, that's my sock project. And like I said, I always like to have a sock project going, especially one that's not I mean, I like a hard project and an easy project because um, it just depends, honestly, if I'm home alone or if my husband's home or what I'm watching. And it's good to be able to kind of skip between them and have like, you know, always something you're in the mood for. Because um, there's nothing worse than when you have, like when you have a whole bunch of hard projects, it's one type of horrible. But I mean, when you just have all stock and that going around and around and around and around and it's like... Do I want to do big stock in that? A little stock in that. And it's like, just not as fun, is what I'm saying. Um, okay, so the next is baby knitting, which is apparently an omnipresent category in my life, because everyone I know decides to have babies. So I've been working on the heirloom set, and I was almost finished. And then our little guest star from earlier found one. She's coming back here, she's sitting right there like, mm found one of the booties. So luckily I had bought extra yarn. Um, when I calculate the yarn, I do the yardage based on like how many, like what's the total from the ball recommendations. But I think like, because the booties only use like a half a ball, I always end up with, when I do a layout, I always end up with like a couple skeins left over, which again, especially in this situation, I'm grateful for. So the heirloom set is, I'm making this for my niece. It includes a few things. So I just need to block these. Everything is finished, um, but it's got the blanket. And this I'm doing in Lana's Paca, no, Lana, Lana's Paca? Something like that, it's a Spanish company. I'll link it below anyway. Um, it's the Organic Baby, so it's 50% cotton, 50% merino. Um, the set itself is done by Paintbox Yarns. Um, it's free on Lovecrafts. So that's always good. I've made the sweater and hat a few times because for friends, I do sweater and hats. And then for nieces and nephew, I do the full layout. And this one, I mean, it is pretty. Like it is just, I have wanted to make this for so long, but nobody um, was having a baby girl. Well, my brother and my husband's brother just weren't having baby girls for some odd reason. Finally, finally. So I did the um, blanket. And then the little cardigan. So I just need to block it and then sew in little um, fixtures here. Let me get it to where I'm holding it properly. It like goes out and then there's the little flower lace on the bottom and the top and this little collar. It's so cute. And I just sew the fasteners. It's just little hook and loops um, onto here. And then you tie it in a little bow. This is just the sweetest, sweetest little cardigan. Um, and it's interesting, for this entire set, what I wanted is I wanted like a bright pink or bright purple, but I couldn't find all the same dye lot in one color. I wanted it to match. And so I kind of like let go of that idea sitting after two yarn shops. Um, and I decided, okay, I'm just going to go for this one. And I'm actually really happy I did because the baby's born now. Um, so I made this in the year to year and a half because I feel like it's winter in Australia right now. So she'll need it next year. Um, and also, you know, who knows how long it takes me to knit something. Um, but yeah, so I, um, 
Here's the little hat, the little bonnet. I love bonnets for babies. I just think, like, I want to wear a bonnet, but I feel like it's not always social ac socially acceptable for, like, grown-ups to wear bonnets. So you got to get them as much as they can when they're babies, right? Um, but I'm actually really happy with this. I think it turned out very, like, vintage cute, um, and she can wear it with all the colors, and it's just seamed up at the back. Um, it's a paint box pattern. All the paint box patterns, they're never in the round. Um, I've tried doing them in the round. It wasn't so bad on the cardigan, because the cardigan, you just go back and forth, because it's open. But, oh, there's so much seaming. Oh. If you heard the audio of that, that was Maisie burping. Um, fun. And then there is, where's the other one? The two little booties, even these are seamed up the back. These are so cute. So really the only changes I made, no Maisie, you can't drink, you're too little. Um, the only changes I made, she's sniffing around, are I used a German cast on because I wanted them like nice and stretchy, you know? Um, but yeah, they're very cute. Um, these took, they were really, really quick, except the baubles took even um, on the blanket. Because this row, you do the cabling and the bobble on the same row. And so I actually timed myself. I think for one normal row, it took me like 20 minutes. Hello, what would you like? What would you like? It took me maybe, not even, it took me like, you know, maybe 10 to 12 to 20 minutes if I was watching something. And then I timed myself in one of those rows, it took like a half hour, 40 minutes. So um, basically you can be in it with this pattern for a little bit but it turned out so cute i'm so happy with how it turned out i'm happy i did the uh cotton wool mix because it's still i think washable because i think it is super wash um you know and my sister-in-law has like now two small children <laughs> so you know and she's just uh not a big hand washing person like my um sister-in-law my brother's wife is because they do a lot of like hiking and outdoorsy things and they need um wool that's like wool so they do a lot of hand washing um but yeah i just i don't know i think when you make baby stuff it's good to put, give them something they can put in the washing machine because especially if they don't knit they don't know you know um other baby knitting i um have okay so i like i said do a lot of baby knitting so i've become kind of familiar with like the big players in the baby knitting space yeah like the pattern designers you know so I saw a new one called Yarnsmiths and there were these two really cute patterns and I have two babies I need to knit for. Um, so I thought, okay, this could be interesting. Maisie, honey, I'm going to play with her for a bit and then I'll be back. Probably with another glass of wine. Okay. Um, I put her in my bedroom, which is just there and it is the coolest room in the house right now in the flat so yeah I would like it noted she has wanted less than nothing to do with me all day like I was trying to play with her and she even like took her toy and ran it to her bed and started playing with herself and so I I don't know I had given up but anyway let's talk about more baby knits so um where was I yeah like I've gotten pretty good at knowing the designers so I saw these yarn spits and I'd never heard of them I saw two really cute cardigans, um, and I found just a basic bonnet pattern, so I'm like, okay, um, I have yarn, so I bought this ages ago to make a Santa hat with in Ireland at, um, this place, Mr. Price, that's like a discount store, and, um, this is Wendy with Wolves, which is this old pattern company called, like, Peter Pan and Wendy, and uh yeah and apparently it's like very historical uh, it's 20 percent wool 80 percent acrylic um like i said i just wanted a santa hat that i could wear like indoors so i didn't want anything too warm um but i wanted it to be soft excellent baby yarn um i had this and i had the white and i started well i actually swatched with that one and i didn't like the way it was going because the first one i made was just a little um it's called the quinn cardigan and yeah, so it's just like a little cable in the front. Um, so I finished the two fronts that are hopefully the same size, but they're not. So um, that's gonna be tomorrow Sandy's problem. Um, I finished the back. And yeah, 
yeah, like very easy. Um, the patterns are a bit weird though, because the picture only shows one cardigan. But then, so this is for the Quinn cardigan. It only shows like a picture of the one I'm making, but then it says like one with a collar, without a collar. So I don't know what that's for, per se. Um, yeah, like there's just no picture of it, no mention of anything. Also, the uh, measurements for it are measured in... Um, like the measurements are measured in measurements instead of in sizes so if you have the baby in front of you this could be really good because you know what you're getting um for this baby it's um i have two and they're in two different places so um i just kind of took the measurements i know both babies will probably be using them this winter so i'm doing the uh three to six month size so i took the measurements from the heirloom set and kind of like based it off of those. Oh my, I look terrible. I'm sorry, we had a very intense flight. Um, but yeah, so, no, I finished the back. I just kind of, yeah, used like the three to six month measurements, which ended up being the smallest size, so that's good. Um, and then I finished one sleeve. Now, I couldn't find one of the fronts for like a week, and I thought there was a big ball of yarn with that. So this is one of the sleeves, and um, then I realized I don't have any more of this yarn. So I don't even know if I'm going to be able to finish the sweater. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, I just don't know. Um, I need to finish one baby set by September because uh, my friends are going to be in like Europe. So I want to ship it to Europe instead of to like Canada because it's going to be so much cheaper, right? Um, but my original plan was to make that cardigan in this color, but when I swatched it, it was like the cabling was kind of getting lost because this yarn actually has a bit of a halo to it. I don't know if you can see the fuzz. It's a lot darker in person. It's showing up bright red on camera. It's actually more of a cranberry with a white fuzz. And I think the cabling was just getting lost in the fuzz. But the second one I want to make is an eyelet. So, um, yeah, and it's just a really beautiful eyelet cardigan. So I'm thinking, um, well, my thinking was the fuzz would actually, like the halo would be better on an eyelet. So yeah, so I'm doing that. Um, look, I'm going to end up making two sets, hopefully by September, and each baby's going to get one, and that's just how it's going to go. And you know what? They're going to like it, because they're both adorable. There's no, like, lesser option in this. Um, as for the white yarn, I really just, I don't know. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I, the thing is, I feel like I have more of it. So I'm going to go through my stash probably this weekend. The issue is my stash is like 90% wool. And it's just a very sweaty time of year. And I don't know if I want to like completely do that, right? So, I don't know. But at the same time, I need to finish these baby cardigans. And I think after that, I don't think I know anyone else who's pregnant right now. And this is the first time that's happened in like almost two, three years. So time for a break. And um, yeah, so as I was sort of unpacking, um, I'm still not unpacked, not even close to it, but I did find a project I sort of uh, abandoned. And this is um, a craftsy class. So it's called um, wool embroidery like a boho sweater from start to finish or something like that it's got one of those long craftsy names um i know it has boho sweater in it and it's about wool embroidery and so the concept of the class is that you um make a sweater and then you embroider the yoke so i have actually finished the sweater i finished this a while ago um but the modification i made is now that i know a little more about good bind offs and um stretchy bind offs I went back and I actually um, undid the sleeves and I noticed that the uh, number of ribbing rows wasn't matching. So I did and I did the Italian bind off. So now it's a lot stretchier, especially since I wear my sleeves rolled up a lot. I wanted something. So yeah, so you can just see it's a lot stretchier. It looks like a bound thing. Um, and the sides match. So yeah. So now this is ready for embroidery. I'm not going to bother with the bottom because I, I don't know, the bottom's pretty stretchy as is. Um, and I'll roll up the bottom. And also my size four needles are in like baby hell right now as they have been for months. But 
yeah, so um, I'm done the sweater. This class is good. It's, I believe, Annie Lupton doing it. And it's, uh, she's really good. I don't know if I love the way she does her increases because she does like an invisible lift. The back is just uh, German short rows and an invisible lift increase. And she says you won't even see it. For me, I can see it. But it'll be on my back. And what happens on my back is none of my business. So, um, yeah, it's nice. Um, I like that it's a very easy sweater. I think if this was your first sweater project, like this is not a first knitting project. She doesn't teach you how to knit. Um, but she goes through the basics. Like she teaches you how to do the increase. Um, she teaches you how to do short rows like this you could be your first sweater um definitely a second sweater be amazing um for me i, I want to say this was one of my first this might have actually been like my first sweater in a way but i had made so many baby sweaters um because my very first sweater ever oh no my very first sweater ever was um a girly knits pattern I made on a trip when I was like traveling around Italy and I made it in this like not next to skin friendly wool but I wore it all the time and I loved it and had a big heart in the front um it was a really cute sweater but it was just so itchy that I would go so red and then it was like short sleeves so I would wear it in the summer and then I would be like red from a sunburn and then it would irritate the sunburn um you know it was just not not a fun time for me um, so, yeah, so that was my first one, um, and it didn't look very good, too, because this was before I, like, kind of knew how to knit properly, properly, so I thought slip, slip, knit was literally, like, slip a stitch, slip a stitch, knit the next stitch, and then I would do, like, knit two togethers on the next row to get my stitch count, so, um, you know, but we've learned, we've improved, and then, um, the kind of second sweater attempt was a baby sweater I made. Because one of my friends back in the UK, um, her sister had a baby and she wanted something hand knit. And so yeah, so I made her a sweater. But yeah, so this one is honestly a great sweater. Um, looking at it now, I don't mind it so much. I don't know. I was going, tell me what you think here. Because I was going to do a tea dye dip. Do we think this washes me out a little bit? This is just a natural... Um, the yarn is from Love, Love Crafts. It's called Milamia. It is so soft. Um, it's 100% merino, and yeah, like, it's one of the softest things. I had a lot of fun, honestly, making this sweater because the yarn felt so nice. And it's, you know, it is a thing. I always used to buy really cheap yarn, and it wasn't, I think I've told this story before, but if you're new, enjoy. Um, yeah, I used to always buy, like, the cheapest yarn at Michael's, and... I would make stuff, but I would never really use it because it was itchy. And, um, you know, my friend, it was actually my friend Julia. She's from Berlin. She is a painter. She is the coolest human being you will ever meet in your life. I'm going to link her down below. Uh, but she knits, she does everything. And she actually said, because she went to like the fancy yarn shop to buy sweater quantities of yarn. And I was like, oh my God, but it's so expensive. And she said to me, like, well, yeah, but I'm going to spend so much time making it, and I want to enjoy making it, and then I want to wear it forever. And I think that just really clicked it for me, where I was like, oh. Especially at that time, um, it was past when I had learned what a proper slip slip knit was. And I was getting good at it and taking it seriously, and I was like, yeah. Um... I wasn't going to do this till the end, but like, yeah, um, up on the blog this week, I did put a post about, um, how to save money on craft supplies you actually want. And it is a key thing about there's a difference between cost and value. So it's almost worth it paying for something that you're actually going to wear, especially for me. Like I, as you can see right now, I'm a deeply sweaty person. So when I buy acrylic, like you're wrapping yourself up in plastic and it's just not nice. I sweat. And I can never wear it for more than an hour, so I don't reach for those things. So I'd rather pay the extra money. It's a better value for me to spend a little bit um, extra and get the 100% wool that will sit next to my skin. Especially now, living in Lithuania, where it gets freezing cold. Like, well below freezing cold, I would um, like some wool. So yeah, so I'm excited. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is the natural color, as was my point. Um, I've been debating tea dyeing it. Just, like, not a lot. I still want it to be, like, white, sort of. Because I have the embroidery colors 
They're literally in a plastic bin sitting right here that I have yet to unpack. Um, but I have the embroidery colors and I think they're very warm. So I almost just want to warm this up a little bit. And I have some other stuff I want to tea dye. So maybe. What do you guys think? Um, if you have been around here for a bit, you will see the, uh, you would have seen the dress I made for Greece where I tea dyed. Um, just a little bit to cut the blue and uh, warm up the white because it was actually my friend Julia's wedding. She wanted everyone in white or blue. And yeah, so I just wanted something that maybe would warm me up instead of just harsh white, but I don't know. Thoughts? I'm like intently looking at myself here. I don't know, because I do have this belief that I think colors found in nature suit all humans best because that's what we're kind of working with but then I also do believe to an extent in color seasons like I'm a deep autumn um so yeah I don't know if you have thoughts on it um let me know I'm slowly transitioning my entire wardrobe to be deep autumn before I kind of figured out that I look good in black we can all see this but I look amazing in brown um I had everything black or gray and so changing that up obviously takes time especially if you want to do it in a sustainable way so yeah that's my uh, personal knitting which will turn into embroidery I haven't done any other embroidery I am sitting staring at the box my embroidery project is in feeling guilty um but you know I think because embroidery is just like a sit down and look at a craft and when I'm doing that I'm usually like sewing or even beading I haven't done I don't know I need more scheduling yeah but sewing I do have a few things so I've not done any sewing in oh I mean we moved my sewing machine here in October and I hadn't touched it so a part of me was concerned because I haven't gotten it tuned up in an embarrassingly long time and um yeah so I wanted to make sure it worked before I did anything kind of um crazy with it you know also I needed to kind of figure out where my setup would be I have a little tabletop ironing board here and so now in order to sew I put my machine then I take my machine away put my ironing board and uh the way I sew I think like the hill I will die on sewing wise is that the way to get your stuff going from homemade to handmade is you have to iron after every single seam and I do French seams um case in point oh this is the Silgaro top by Friday Pattern Company I've done the set um definitely worth a make I call it my um yeah this is sewing related we can go on this tangent um I call this like my brunch set um I'm not wearing the pants right now we'll get to what I'm wearing on the bottom half in a minute um yeah I kind of call it like my hotel brunch set um I wore it a bit just after I made it in Hungary so that was like two years ago maybe and I wore it a lot but at the same time because it's 100% linen it's so comfy at the same time it kind of like shows a bit of a bra so if I don't have a proper bralette then I have to like wear a bandeau or something so I was never like 100% but um yeah excellent the whole set great for hotel brunches oh my god like you know you go you have your brunch and then you change into your day clothes. The pants I've worn to death. Uh, they literally have two patches, um, one on each thigh at this point, and I'm probably gonna have to patch the patches. But I will continue doing that until I run out of fabric. And I will honestly probably cut this up to save those pants because they are so comfy. Um, I do like this though. This year I'm trying to put it over dresses a little bit more to make dresses into like skirts so they can be a little more casual. Um, but yeah, that's just a banger of a sewing pattern, honestly, um, especially pants like if you want a linen pant that's loose and flowy my god those are like they have become my sweatpant and they're all I want to wear I do actually need to make another one because my friend bought me fabric well she bought fabric and I'm gonna make it for her thank god I didn't make it then though because she like does um Brazilian jiu-jitsu so she like her weight fluctuates a lot and now she's kind of like at where she wants to be for competing in the level she wants she explained it to me I don't really understand it um Anyway, she couldn't eat cheese that day was the, like, consensus. But, you know, I get it. Athletics are weird. But, yeah, like, I, um, I love this top. It's comfy. It's flowy. Maybe I won't destroy it to save the pants. 
maybe I'll just make a new pair of pants. Um, but yeah, they're a hundred percent like my sweatpants. I love them. Um, but yeah, so I haven't sewn in a while. Um, very many concerns about it because I was just kind of like, oh yeah, is my sewing machine going to work? Is my, um, like, do I still have these skills? Um, you know, people always say it's like riding a bicycle. I don't know how to do that. So I can't vouch for that. But like, yeah, will I still be able to like feather the paddle? Um, well, it still just makes sense to me in the like order of operations of sewing. Do I still know how to sew? Um, and I've taken long sewing breaks before because obviously a sewing machine is not the most portable of hobbies. But this one, I don't know, it just felt different. Because even when I was in Dublin um, in the summer, I wasn't sewing a lot. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to start with something different. And I've also um, wanted to kind of elevate my homeware. Because I feel like I'm wearing sweats around the house all day. And I don't feel great about myself when I do that. Um, I mean, the linen pants are a bit more put together. Um, but yeah, like I was wearing sweatpants with holes in them that were just like crappy ones that I couldn't even... Like, you know how you get that fabric? You can't even repair it if you try. And so I just decided maybe I want to try wearing skirts. And I figured, okay, well, a skirt, like a, just a basic skirt is such a good thing to practice. Because it's literally, this is just rectangles. So I made this. Which way is, this is the front. It's a little dirty and super wrinkled. And I'm sorry for that. But goes to show, I wear what I make. Um, so this is just some 100% cotton I bought at Guineas in Ireland. Um, which is sort of like... If you're from Vancouver, it's like army and navy. Um, if you're from anywhere else, but like with fabric and stuff upstairs. If you're from Lithuania, maybe like Norfa, at least the Norfa I went to, uh, but with fabric. And yeah, so I got it there. It was really cheap. I paid like five euro meter. It's 100% cotton. Um, and this is literally just four rectangles. One for the front, one for the back, two for the pockets. Um, I didn't even put a separate waistband on. I, um, yeah, just fold it over and then shove the elastic in there. Um, the pockets, I did do, like, the proper detailing. I don't know if you can see, but there's, like, the seam there to stop the gaping. Um, you know, it's all French seamed. It's not a bad skirt. I did the waist a little too big because I forgot, like, I did it just my normal waist, but I forgot you want some tension there. Um, so I've had to pull it in. And then, I don't know if it's because it's summer and I'm just sweating so much or if I've actually, like, lost weight. Um, it's too big now, so, you know, I want to just pull it in a little bit more. Um, I wanted big pockets because when I take the dog out, I need to put my keys somewhere. Um, yeah, so it's pretty good. And I've actually enjoyed wearing a skirt around. Um, I feel better when I'm, like, walking the dog. I feel a little more put together. I need bike shorts that are longer, so that definitely needs to be a project that will happen. Um, but yeah, all up, I'm actually, like, like literally the process of making this was cut two big rectangles. Cut two smaller pocket-shaped rectangles. Um, it's me, so the insides are obviously French-seamed. Because, let me get a better way to... I'm sorry if this is really chaotic, by the way. I haven't done any sort of talking to a camera in a really long time um so I'm rusty but I'm trying but yeah so it's all French seamed really nicely um hem literally throw it over shove the lot like this is easy I did the pockets last because I wanted them to run through the seam line you know a little bit they overlap so the seams there and the here and the pockets start here um, just because that's where I like to shove my hands in. I accidentally did them really close to the waist and it hits like right at my natural waist. And I was like, nope. Um, so I had to move them down a few times. But yeah, no, all up, I'm happy with it. It's really comfy to wear and that's what matters. I kind of wish I'd made it a little bigger maybe. Um, just in terms of like, because the elastic needs to be smaller. But I wish I had maybe a little more length because it would be comfortable. Because like to sit in it now, I need to like hike it up. But yeah, it was good, and it proved my machine worked, and I mean, clearly I'm a little proud of it, because I want to keep talking about it, so yeah, I'm happy with this. Um, and like I said, it's comfortable, and that's what matters. Um, okay, now we're going to get into it, guys. This video's too long already, but it's going to be longer. 
Um, I really do need to do this more often. That's the issue. So, um, same fabric, 100% cotton. I saw these pants probably over 15 years ago at this point. I don't know when these pants became a thing in my life. Um, definitely since the beginning of Pinterest, because every sort of like craft Pinterest board I've had since it came out has had a version of these pants on it. You know the pants that have no closures, they just have like ties to the back and then you tie them to the front? Yes. Guys, I made them and I've been sitting with them the entire time. So, let me get some better footage in them and then we'll go through everything. If you ever need to ask yourself which part of my house is the least messy, it means there isn't the least messy part. And you live where I do. So, these are the pants. Open on the sides. So this is how you put them on. So this is the front tie. So they go out, then the back tie, and that's the pants. You can also wear them with, let me, the front forward, Or the back forward. And then the front. Now note the way that they both fell because that's about to come up. And then, see I'm just tying them in the back. And that's what the back looks like when you wear them this way. Multifaceted. Is this cute? Do I like high-waisted pants now? Huh. Okay. Let's talk about these pants because I have a lot of thoughts. And yes, I poured myself more wine. I put the entire area I hate in my body the most all over the internet. I'm entitled. So. Um, let's talk first about the tutorial I used. Um, I forget the name of the YouTube channel. I was not prepared today. Um, if you want professionalism, I'm not your girl. Um, but it was an excellent tutorial. I'll link it down below. Excellent tutorial. I like the Orly Shani one. Um, that's kind of what got me, I think it was last year when she posted and I was like, oh, it might be time. But last year I wasn't in the mental headspace. I wasn't doing a lot of sewing except for like test sewing. Um, but yeah, so I finally did it this year. I like hers because it's easier, but with the woven fabric, I wanted something because I was just like, I want darts. I want professionalism. I don't know. Um, yeah, but for knit fabric, I think her method would probably work a whole lot better. Like, I'm not doing a dart in a knit fabric. I'm just not. Um, and I am tempted to make these again in knit, but we'll get there. So, um, I think that, um... Yeah, so I had always wanted to make these. I see these all the time. The tutorial I used was really good. I didn't like the way she encased the um, fabric, so I just kind of did my own, like, sew the waistband, da -da -da, pop it up, sew an extra stitching. Because um, she did something, and it looked amazing. Don't get me wrong, it looked like it worked. But I was just staring at it for ages, and um, couldn't figure it out. So I was like, you know what? I've watched this six times. I'm just going to do it my way. And yeah, so I did that. Um, I really liked the way she, um, I really like what she used. Everything was like, these are my measurements, but also use your measurement here. And I think that was really good. Um, you use your hip measurement to determine your crotch, which I think for the way I'm shaped, didn't really work out that great because it made it a little shorter than I wanted. Um, but that said, I am a 
you know, very much a pear shape. Um, can be soft somatic if you're wondering. Um, yeah, so it, uh, I think just that kind of threw things out because I've noticed for me they're a little long in the crotch and a little short in the leg. But, you know. Um, my intention was to make these as a mock-up. And then if I like them, go buy like nice linen and make them in maybe a linen or linen uh, mix, linen blend. So, okay, I am not going to be doing that. Um, so yeah, tutorial, loved it. If this is your jam, great, absolutely follow this one. This is a good one. Um, I like the darts. I might even draft a pant pattern off of her darts because the way the darts sit on me, as you could see when it was pulled back, like that looks pretty good and I've always wanted like a 1930s vintage pajama and I think this might be like the thing. So the reason why these will not be part of that pajama set, first off, um, okay, first my curiosity is appeased. That's all I want. I'm happy enough with that. Um, secondly, I, we, I mean, I have been wearing them a lot. I actually wore them to do groceries the other day, um, because I just couldn't face putting on jeans. But there are some things. Some of the key things that kind of stopped me from making these for so long is, um, first off, I'd never seen anyone with my body type wearing them. Everyone who had seemed to make one of these in the past has been extremely skinny. Um, that's my bird telling me to shut up because he's heard this rant multiple times. Um, I was just being extremely skinny. So, you know, I wanted to kind of see what happens if you have hips. What happens if, you know, I was also worried that they would open too much when I sat because of my hips or like would they just, you know. Um, but that ended up not being a problem, the fold over is fine. Um, they do open up a little bit when I sit, but I kind of don't mind. I'm literally sitting with them right now, just like completely open because I want the fan to get my legs. I'm so hot. I'm so sweaty. It's not a good time. But yeah, so I'm okay with that. Um... Definitely though when I'm sitting at like a cafe or something, I uh, like I like to shave my legs. If you don't like to shave your legs, whatever, disregard this. That's personal preference for me. I do. Um, and for me, it's like I have to shave my legs with these. I might as well wear it like a skirt. Because um, they do open enough that you can see it. And I'm very pale with very dark hair so you can see it. Um, what else about them did I not like? Um, I was wondering, like, how? And we all saw how. Like, they do work. They are functional. I can't, like, test them on that. They're pants. Um, one of the things with the functionality, though, is you can't really add pockets to these. And I like my pants to have pockets. I like everything I own to have pockets. Um, so there's that. And another big concern. Um, I grew up in a family where women have very small bladders. It's just our genetics. Uh, so I need to have a bathroom plan. Like I kind of miss the gene, but every woman around me growing up was always like, okay, where's the bathroom? Even for my wedding, we like counted out the bathroom stalls. We wanted at least four women's bathroom stalls for the size of the wedding I was having important because I've been to a one stall wedding does not work and especially a lot of uh, pubs and bars in Vilnius where I live are like one unisex stall which brings up not only the fact that these take a while to like you know take well they don't take a long time to put off or to take off but they take a while to put on I don't want to hold up a line like that it's not fair and secondly um I mean, my original concern was what if you had a few drinks and you had to take them on and off? And I think we've seen today it can be done, but it's just very annoying. Um, I tested that. I had some of my friends over for a uh, mead tasting and I wore these and I literally got through like one bathroom break and I was like, I'm just going to go put on the pants. Actually, the linen ones. So, you know, um, it's just not worth it. But... The bigger issue that I discovered that I didn't even think of until I made them is there's literally no way to take these off without them hitting the ground. And that's kind of fine when I'm at home because I know my bathroom floor is clean. But in a public bathroom, especially in a one stall bathroom where there are drunk men, I don't really want these touching the ground and then going on my body. You know what I mean? 
So yeah, um, for a lot of reasons, but honestly, mostly the bathroom plan. <laughs> I will probably not be making one of these. I am curious as to how they would look in a drapier fabric though, because I feel like they're just a bit stiff, but then as I've been wearing them and they've softened up a bit, um, I do like them. So maybe I just need a wide leg trouser in a different style. Um, but yeah, it was a wild ride that was over 15 years in the making. And I'm, I'm excited I did it. It was worth it. And I hope you got some entertainment out of it. And if you're thinking of making these, I hope I gave you some insights. Like, I do think, because I have worn them, right? Like, I've worn them to the shops where I know it's not going to be, like, a bathroom issue where I'm like, okay, I can do that. But, like, I wouldn't wear them to brunch. I wouldn't wear them to lunch. I'll wear them walking the dog. Um, but that's tough because they don't have pockets. Then I have to wear a button-down shirt with a pocket to put my keys. It's just, um... I'm a bit of a functionalist. I think that you can put function as your most important thing and find beauty within that. And that's where these pants are failing. But I do like them. I think they look okay. I don't know if I love the apron style and I don't like my butt in the back. But again, the back of me is no one's business. It's not my business, like, you know. But I can tell and I feel like I have a good bum, so I should like honor that too. Um anyway. That's those thoughts. I don't know if I hope I've inspired you to make these or not, to be honest. Um, I just, I don't know. If you have a better bladder than mine, you go. I feel like they'd be a great beach cover up pant though. Like if you have a really cute swimsuit, wearing these on top of a swimsuit. I might wear them if we go to like a lake day and I don't want to wear like my changing room dress if I'm like, okay, I can just throw some pants on. Like they do have a function and that's why I can't say like don't make these because they have save my ass um also part of the problem when I walk this needs to be mentioned because I wanted to test this too when I walk with them they kind of like my thighs rub together and so um when I wear shorts like my thighs eat them and they kind of do this there's a lot of like pulling um which is another consideration to be perfectly honest um yeah so if you have my body type finally someone did it um I don't know there's no conclusion with that. Um, so let's move on to next project. Obviously I want to block my heirloom set. That is key because that needs to get in a um, bag to Australia or in the mail to Australia as soon as possible. Baby projects, socks. Honestly, I think I just right now need my socks to all be Curious Head Made socks. So you're gonna get really sick of me talking about her, but, or Kitchen Sink, Kitchen Sink's a shop. She also does a really good, um, like a really really good sock pattern um that's relaxing and fun we're going to maybe dive through my yarn stash uh crochet my temperature blanket is 100 percent wool that is just not going on my body right now and it's for 2023 i know i'm behind but i'm also happy that i'm behind on my temperature blanket because um since i'm in a place i've never lived before it's given me a good scope i mean I heard it got down to minus 30 in the winter here regularly and people told me it really never got above 25. Well, it only got to minus 12 or I think it got to minus 15 or 17 for a few days, right? So I can do like a minus seven and below thing. Um, and it has been over 25 every day. I am dying. So I think I might actually be an advocate of starting your temperature blanket a year late. I know it's not as fun, I know it's not as cute, but if you move a lot, even this year's temperature blanket, I'm just dreading getting to the winter because I know it's going to be like this wash of white. And I know it's my blanket, my rules, but I like rules. So it's going to be just this like swath of white. And also I think it's funny and it really represents the move because I made my 2023 blanket obviously to uh, Dublin. And... Dublin and Lithuania have extremely different climates. So, um, yeah. Next up for crafting for me, I'm not touching that. Um, I don't know, I really don't have a crochet project on the go, but I should. I do want to embroider. I miss embroidery. Like, I think about embroidery a lot. Um, today, since I've had some wine, I'm probably just going to do my socks, because that's just stock net and I can do that. Um, I have more of this black fabric. It's sitting beside me, but more of this pant skirt black fabric. I'm not sure how much more of it I have. I bought 20 meters. Um, 
I have a little bit more and I've realized there's some gaps in my wardrobe. Oh, my entire wardrobe is a gap. I hate all my clothes. But um, I need a funeral dress because I have been in the position where I've had to buy an outfit for a funeral after someone really close to me passed. And I had to do that while I was grieving and it sucked and it was horrible, especially if you're, I mean, I am not standard size. I'm two specialty sizes. I'm tall and I'm plus. I just can't go into a store and find something and when you have to do that you're not going to find something you like or you're going to have to pay a lot for it and it's just not a decision you want to make when you're grieving so um I need to make well I have black fabric like I said I'm trying not to wear black anymore that's why I'm using this mostly for mock-ups um but I do want to have a kind of um modest enough black dress always in and just like an outfit that is appropriate for a funeral because I never want to have to put myself through that experience again. Um, I also think the other thing everyone should have is a gown and that's the hill I'll die on because you don't want to have to buy a fancy dress right before an event. Maybe I should make myself a gown. I don't know. Basically I need all new clothes and um, I am too overwhelmed by that concept to actually do anything about it. So join me while we work out what's involved in that I don't know um thank you guys so much for listening to me honestly um I know like I said there's a million and two things you could be doing but you're choosing to hang out with me while I am chaotic in the heat drinking wine so I hope you had a good time too um let me know what you're making let me know if you're making anything I'm making mostly let me know if you've ever lusted after these damn pants and if you've made them and what your bathroom plan is that's what I really want to know to be honest because tips for me because I would love to no I wouldn't I don't like the way they look what am I saying thank you guys for hanging out I'll see you later bye